When I went to school, I changed my major from psych to communications, and all of a sudden, my classes started to make sense for me. When I graduated Boston University in 1978, I sure knew how to spend money. I didn't know how to earn it. You take it a day at a time. You breathe. My greatest teacher and counselor has always been my gut feelings. Usually they never lie to me. They're about 98% right. And that's what I did. I kept going towards work that I loved. And I would get a job. I, I worked in the giant, with the giants at ABC News. While I loved that, and it was so exciting to work with Rune Arledge and Barbara Walters, I knew that I was not cut out to work in TV. I didn't want to be married to my job. I wasn't a workaholic. I knew that about myself. I wanted balance. So I kept searching for true work that utilized my skills. And then I found it. I became a publicist. I could be enthusiastic, persuasive, see the angel in a story, and pitch it, all for the good of greater good, all to make a positive news story. And it was great. When I turned 30, I said, I can do that. I want to open up my own firm. I'm so glad I didn't know what it would all entail. I probably never would have done it, but I'm so glad I did. Sometimes not having all the information is the greatest way to take that plunge. I did not have any of the answers. I just kept breathing and feeling, and life kept taking me over. When I was 37, I met a man who said, I want to make positive music for young people and bring wisdom through their own music. I said, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. And instantly, we joined forces. And all of a sudden, there I was on stage performing his original music and singing and playing the bongos. I was in heaven. I was so excited when he put me on his, on his cassette. And I got to go to my studio for the first time. OK, so it wasn't a real studio. It was a one-bedroom apartment. And that was OK. But I got to sing in the vocal booth. OK, it really wasn't a vocal booth. It was a bathroom. But it didn't matter. I was on a cassette. And I was in heaven. And I went out to heal the children. Little did I know the children would heal me. I could not believe the world through their eyes, the world through their hearts, and the world through their egos. Every day, it has given me so much. Every single day of giving to the youth, I've gotten back twofold all the time. It's my people skills that have carried me. When I was in high school, it wasn't that challenging. I got along with everybody. In life, it was way more challenging. People are complex. They, have, they come from their own insecurities. They come from their own way. You don't always, it's, sometimes it's difficult to reach somebody. And sometimes talking is the hardest way to communicate. Sometimes it's the greatest way to communicate. I know that during the presidential election, you had a lot of great debates. And I was really very proud to hear that you handled that really well without verbal attack and humiliation. You had your own points of view, and you said them. But you didn't diss anybody in your delivery. You had a way to disagree. And you did your research, and you spoke intelligently. If you can negotiate and be willing to listen to anybody, that's the greatest skill you will ever, ever have. Never underestimate the importance of your people skills, never and the importance of really listening to somebody. There is something so sacred to really look at somebody's eyes and to listen to them. It is so important. It's just people get so distracted all the time by technology and everything else. Hold on for a second. I can't talk right now. I'm giving a commencement speech. I've got to call you back. OK, bye. Did I make my point? OK. You want to give somebody real listening. That means looking in their eyes and not being distracted. You will be challenged by people, and it's OK. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep understanding how to meet them and meet with them and compromise. Listen to their ways. Listen to who they are. 
They will be your greatest challenge and your greatest reward, always. The decisions you make with people will be so important to your life, you have no idea. The people that you take a stand to let in and the people that you take a stand to keep out. You can't learn enough about human nature and humanness. I know that you're going to make the world a better place. I know it. You're going to learn from our mistakes. You're going to be less greedy. You're going to be more other-focused than self-focused in the world that we grew up in. We were idealistic, but somehow along the way, a lot of us got not lost some of that idealism. I believe in you and I believe in the world you're about to create. You just keep true to yourself. Know who you are. You can't wear anybody else but you. It won't work. You will come to see that. You can be surrounded by all the shoulds in the world. It won't work. You have to be you. So stay true to who you are always and it will guide you. And you listen to those inner feelings, those gut feelings. They will be your greatest guide of all. I want to read you a quote that Jerry Zucker, the director and movie producer, wrote. Think of the world as a big glass of water with some salt in it. You have a choice. You can try to pick out all of the salt, or you can keep pouring in more water so eventually it gets less bitter. As you begin your new journey, you can try to remove everything that you find distasteful in the world, or you can just pour in more love. It is the only thing that the more you give away, the more you have. Graduating Kingswood class of 2009, from one graduate to another, it is your time, it is your turn to fly. <laughs>